Hello everyone and welcome back. Now that you have an idea of what exactly are forms in iOS development, let's get started by creating a really small form. And in the later, in the next video, we are going to go ahead and create a much larger form. The form that we are going to be creating will be the night shift settings in iPhone. So you can see that we have some sort of a section header over here. We have scheduled, which is a toggle switch. We have a from and to, which is sunset and sunrise. And then we have manually enable until tomorrow, which is a switch control. Color temperature, which is a section header. And then we have a slider control, which goes from less warm to more warm. So let's go ahead and create this kind of a screen using the forms. Forms have been introduced in Xcode 11 beta 3. So if you're running Xcode 11 beta 2, beta 1, or something before beta 3, you might not be able to access the Forms API. Forms API or Forms can be simply created using Form. But right now, if you saw in our uh, screenshot, we actually need the navigation bar so that we can print out Night Shift. So instead of the root element form, we are going to use the root element, which in this case is navigation view. Inside the navigation view, we can actually go ahead and create the form. Now the form can have multiple sections. So I'm going to go ahead and create a section. A section can have a header or a footer or a header and a footer. Now we don't really need a footer in this example. So we are simply going to use a header. I can go ahead and pass in some sort of a text over here for header, so header text, and some sort of a content. This content will actually make up the form. So if I go ahead and put a text over here, let's say, hello world, this will become part of the form, as you can see on the right hand side. Now, obviously, we don't really need header text to be written over there. So let's go ahead and get some sort of a text that is, that's what we want which is text over here. The night shift automatically shifts the colors of, for your, of your display. So something similar to that particular text, I'm just gonna copy paste it. One thing you will notice is that the text is now cutting off. It's not wrapping up to the new line. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is I also need some padding. So I'm gonna go ahead and add padding for the text. There we go. By default, if you don't pass anything in the padding, it's going to add 12 points of padding, but you can pass something like five or two if you don't like the 12 points padding. The next one is the line limit. Now this is all we're going, we're doing that on the text view over here. The line limit is how many number of lines you want to wrap the text. And I'm going to just say nil because nil means that just go ahead and wrap as many as needed. Great, so this looks very similar now, I guess, to this part. You can also change the color of the text if you want to, to make it more similar, but it's good enough for us. The next up is the scheduled with a toggle switch. Now, right now, we are displaying a text, so maybe we can replace it with toggle toggle. Now the problem with toggle is that toggle takes in a binding expression. We don't have any binding expression so we have to build that. So I'm just going to say over here is on and I'm going to build that later on but I'm just going to call it scheduled. And in the text part of it, this part, I can actually say whatever text I want to appear. So I can say schedule. Now obviously this part doesn't really exist so I need to go ahead and create this property on the top somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and create it as a state property. So this will be the state of the content view. So we can simply say scheduled which will be a boolean property. Initially it will be false. Let's go ahead and try it again and see if it actually uh, and this is not is one is is on. So now hopefully it will display some sort of a toggle switch with text. Great. 
Let's look at our mockup. Okay, it looks pretty similar. Let's move to the next one. Now the next one is from and to, and what we are displaying is sunset and sunrise. So let's go ahead and work on that part. So this will be the from and to part. Now, if you look at the from and to part over here, the from and to, you can implement it in many different ways. I can actually use a horizontal stack and then use a vertical stack to stack from and to. I can also use a vertical stack to stack these two sunset and sunrise. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and use a horizontal stack. Inside the horizontal stack, I'm gonna use a vertical stack so I can go ahead and line up text. So I can say from, and I can actually go ahead and say to. Let's see how this appears. Okay, that's good enough. Now the next part will be to add the sunset and sunrise, but this is on the right hand side. First of all, we're just gonna add them together. So vertical stack, and then again, text, which can be a sunset, and the next one will be a sunrise. Great, but this is really on the left hand side. We want it to be on the right hand side. Well, in that case, we can actually use the spacer view which can add some space between the two views. Great, that's also good. Other thing you will notice is that the sunset and sunrise is kind of like a navigation button or a navigation link. And they're also a little bit different color, like a blue color. Let's go ahead and first change it to blue color. I'm gonna go ahead and say color and simply call it color.blue. And the same thing I'm gonna do over here, color, color.blue. And let's go ahead and see that if it, oh, not over there. Uh, let's go ahead and actually revert all of these changes and do it over here because we want to color not our from and to, but sunset and sunrise. So again, color and color dot blue. Okay, great. But we want this to be a navigation link. So what we can do is simply go ahead and wrap them inside a navigation link. So there we go, navigation link. The navigation link have one property called destination that you need to set, which is where should it go when you click it. So I'm just gonna say schedule settings, like a text view, and then wrap everything up in the navigation link. And there we go. So now you can see a little bit of a navigation link going on. But as we added the navigation link, what happened is that there's a space over here. Now, how can we remove that particular space? Let's go ahead and call fix size on the navigation link, and then it will remove the space. All right, so that's great. Let's move on to the next section. The next section actually is the manually enable until tomorrow section, which, is, which contains a toggle switch. So how can we develop this part? Let's go back and find out where our section actually finishes. So this is where we're starting our section and kind of hard to see because it's over here and then it finishes. So this one for navigation link and so on going on. Uh, most probably it has finishing over here. All right, so we're gonna start with a section over here, section and passing in another header. In this case, we don't really have any text for the header, so I'm just gonna leave it blank over here because if you see over here, we don't really have anything, no header, nothing, but we do have a little bit of a padding going on. So let's go ahead and first create this and see how it actually looks like. And the next one I'm gonna go ahead and add is some sort of a text over here. Just say hello, okay. I just want to see how it looks like. So this is how it looks like. This is that extra padding or extra section. Um, if you want, you can add a little bit more padding to it by giving it padding to your uh, text. And now it has a little bit more padding, maybe like 12 points of padding. We obviously don't really want to display the text. We actually want to display a switch or a toggle switch. So let's go ahead 
and replace this with the toggle switch. I'm going to go ahead and select all of that and replace it with a toggle. Just like the other toggle that we use, we need to provide some sort of a binding expression. I'm simply going to use something called manually and we will declare that later. Enabled till tomorrow. And for the label itself, I'm just going to use obviously a text box, which will have some sort of a text. And that text can be the same as it appears in the night shift settings. So manu manually enable until tomorrow. All right. OK, great. Now we don't really have a manually enable till tomorrow property. So let's go at the top and we will try to create that. So I'm going to go ahead and say over here state private var, which is a Boolean property. And initially, we will have it as false. OK, let's go ahead and build that. OK, we actually already created that property. Maybe I messed up the name. Let's go ahead and put the same name. Oh, I added a dollar sign and replace it with the same name. And let's go ahead and try it again and see if our view on the right hand side in our preview is updating or not. And there we go. It looks nice. Obviously, you can actually make it a little bit more uh, wording should be correct and all that stuff, but we're close, right? The next step is the color temperature and then a slider control. So let's work on the color temperature. I'm going to go back over here and add another section. And in this case, I will again have a header and I will use a text over here. I will say maybe color temperature. And inside over here, I can actually also add a little bit more padding over here so that we will have more padding, a little bit more. I mean, you can actually pass in more if you want to. If you want even more padding, that's fine. Now I want to stack things, but I want to stack things in a horizontal fashion. So I'm going to use a horizontal stack. I'm going to say less warm. That's the first one. If you see over here, less warm then the slider, then more warm. So less warm, and then we have a slider, which will have some sort of a value passed to it. So I can say maybe over here, uh, color temperature, and then text will be more warm. Now this is not going to be exactly like the prototype or the screenshot. It will be similar, but not exactly like that. All right, so let's go ahead and first create the state private var color temperature will be a value and I believe the value has to be CG float so let's go ahead and do that CG float equals to 0 0.5 which means meet me halfway let's go ahead and build that and let's go ahead and try it again and you can see that I'm using Xcode 11 beta 3 so it keeps on uh, having some issues Okay, there we go. It actually looks much nicer, much nicer uh, than the other prototype. I mean, you can move this up and down by using the offset, I believe, but it looks really nice. I mean, I can actually go ahead and try the offset. So let's go ahead and try the offset over here. And uh, we are only going to provide most probably the Y. Let's see if I say maybe minus 10, does it actually move up or something? So it does move up a little bit. All right. So you can use the offset if you want to move up these more warm and all that stuff. Um, but, but that's the gist of it at least. All right. So in this lecture, you learn that how you can create or how you can use the forms API to create the settings screen. And you can use the forms API obviously to, to create uh, any kind of a form, any kind of a registration, login form, any kind of user input form. Um, as I mentioned earlier on, that previously, without using the Surf UI, you can still build these interfaces, but you may have to use like a static table view or a normal stack view and you put everything inside stack view, that's fine. But with the Surf UI and the forms control and the forms view that is available, it makes things much, much easier for you as you have noticed. If you like this video and you want to support my channel, the best way would be to go on Udemy and check out my course, Surf UI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. You can see I already have 
382 students enrolled. This is the highest rated course on Udemy on its sort of UI topic. It's around 5.5 hours long and I keep on adding new content to the course. You can see that the course covers list and navigation, grid layout, MVVM also. No other course covers MVVM, but I'm covering MVVM design pattern also because that is a recommended pattern to use when you're building your Surf UI applications. Custom views and gestures, property wrappers, and so much more. Actually, in the Surf UI course, we also build a form, but you can see the form that we build, apart from the night shift form that you just completed, we also build a notification form using all the decorative styling. And it's so much fun building a form using Surf UI. So if you're interested in the course, the link to the course is right there in the description of this video. So click on the link and you will get the best deal because there's the coupon already attached to it. And if you're interested in some other courses like augmented reality and machine learning and blockchain, I also have those courses and you will find the same links in the course description. So that's the best way to support my work. Uh, thank you so much. And if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you for your continuous support.